Blessings! Welcome forward to Reasonings right here at The Trail Life. I'm your host, The Great Owl, in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. Perfect love. Perfect love. Yes, Brother Singh, a quiet, beautiful Sunday afternoon. Yeah, we're at Trail Life giving them a different dimension. Yeah, like when we first started, you know, it was, you know, me in front of the camera. More time I used to love sitting on this side. Because usually, this is the cooler side of Trail Life. Because oh. that side was always hot with the sun. And, um, now we are here in full cycle, you know. I, I can hardly believe that it's, it's been five years since we really started, you know. So, you know, going into the sixth year, it's, it's quite amazing that, um, you know, God has really taken care of us, you know, through all this. And I remember what kind of a situation I was in. At that time, I never had anything that was of any value. It was always intermittent, short-lived stuff, short-lived relationship. You know, I didn't have a full-time job since 2001. Obviously, I was a full-time artist, right? And um, part-time jobs. I remember in a year, I'd probably see a good paycheck maybe three times for the year because three times for the year, I would get at least a commercial. And most times, I was extra. You know, you know the extra? I don't know if you know the movie business, like I in one sense. The extra is just the person who and a spear to stand up there to fill in the blank space. It's like a NPC, yeah? <laughs> our, our NFC, whatever they call those particular people. So I did that for, for at least, you know, five years. And during the time when I got, well, not five years, but all of my career, but I, for the five year period of time up until I got saved, that was the way in which I would be able to make some money like a good amount of money like so those three paychecks for the year will literally take care of my bills and my needs for the year and some of my career is still like that to this day where we're not earning money um, you know i earn money quarterly and i'm not gonna pretend like I, I earn money like otherwise i earn money quarterly and it's been this way for a pretty long time i mean even twice for the year i really earn money hey <laughs> to be honest i know that might sound strange to people but why am i saying these things right why did we start out the video like this brother saying i started out the video like this because I want to talk about the goodness of God, but that God will take care of you. God will take care of us. That none of his seed shall sit at the sidewalk begging bread. Once you come unto the kingdom, no matter how terrible your finances are, your state of mind, your outlook, your experience, it always improves once you start serving the true and living God in beliefs, behavior, and practices. Brother Singh, you agree with me or some foolish matter? Real thing, man, cause father always a look out for it. From day one, he always make a way for survive. Yes. Take care of our needs. If we need a camera, yes. he provide the camera. Hallelujah. We need a computer, he provide the computer, you know. If we need a phone, yes. he provide the phone. So God know what we need. Hey. And he provided it. You see me? Nothing more, nothing less. Yes. And him always a watch we, how we deal with the things we receive. You see me? So him, hey. him pour little blessings, you know, because, all right. We used to live in our apartment. And we never have no space for grow anything. Mm -hmm. No land, you know. So we start get some little all water containers and cut them in half and put wow. dirt in them and you know <laughs> we not even get some nice looking pots you know we just <laughs> any little thing any container <laughs> put farm. dirt in it put a plant in it and it just, just excites me wow. we just see the little seed yes. start just Germany. maturing to this big old tree yes. you know <laughs> So I'm always fascinated with growing things. So my father said, say, I love that, you know? Yes. And he said, all right, Ramon, I'm going to move to our next place. That's where Adrian did at the time in Portmore. Yes. And we have a little square piece of land, like small, mm -hmm. like between me and you, basically. Wow. <laughs> you know, and little dirt right here. So. That's a little cube. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. And we come so and plant up my little... Organic cubicle. You know, my herbs and, you know? Yeah. And they look up my meringue seed and mm -hmm. the meringue wow. tree start grow big and tall. <laughs> it just a sprout. 
Moringa yeah. just get tall. Yeah, we really have green thumb, man. Man, and it was amazing to see the growth. Yes. So it, most of you watch me, you know, mm -hmm. and say, all right, why him do the container? Mm -hmm. You know, him, him do good with the container, man. Ah, he said, why him yeah. do the little piece of land, you know, Oh, I'm doing good with the little piece of land, man. Oh. And also the father comes so though and bless me with a big portion of land now. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know, as much as we can plant. Yes, as much as we can put in. <laughs> you yeah. know? And I mean, you know, that's how we just do the right thing, same way. Yes. Can I'm blessed with certain things and what we do with it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, brother Singh. So you're saying it's basically a process of accepting the gifts of God but being able to deal with them appropriately to get more blessing because you, you move from the potted um, um, planting of you know I'm, I'm supposing vegetables and them thing there and your herbs I mean to have food security and basically feed yourself you know as your vision but you started where you were and the Lord kept blessing you so it, so it wasn't really about the fact that you think that blessing means he will give you this three, ten, five acre piece of land. I'm going to start you out with the highest end vehicle. And that's what I'm feeling, that you're saying that the blessing isn't this, oh, my dream came through at the highest level what a dream is. It's actually that the Lord would have been blessing you all throughout the process. Like I said, before I got awoken, before he saved me from the pits of hell, those three times a year that I would get those contracts, I knew it was him. I knew hey, it was him because, listen, let me tell you something, brother. The way difficult those times were struggling artists, and when I say struggling artists, that's not be really clear. Struggling poet, because poets aren't really considered artists that much in Jamaica. I mean, of course, you're an artist. I'm not playing smart. I'm just saying that you're not seen as the best artist or the most economically viable. You're the one that they say is not going to make any money. It's like a poor thing. So imagine me having all this message, because you know, our music really talks about having message and meaning in what we're sharing creatively. So I always had intense messages, intense meaning. Struggling artists. But it was three or four times for the year, sometimes more, I would get those contracts. When I got Better Must Come, the movie, many of my friends knew that the movie was going to be looking for um, roles. For the characters and such, I didn't know. I went onto an interview with, uh, on Fame FM um, with, with Sonic at the time and um, with Lynch and um, Donovan Watkins. I remember I knew that Lynch and Donovan knew something because the interview was set up um, with Sonic Bastiani because of them, right? And you know, it was Fame FM and they were very excited and they ta you know, it's like they tagged me along. I, I tagged along, I thought. Anyway, we went there and they started talking about a movie that they were going to do and that they were preparing to audition for. I didn't know about it. So I just basically, in that interview, spoke about my poetry. And, you know, um, Sunny kind of liked the vibe. And she was like, well, um, so Sage, are you going to be part of this movie? I'm like, movie? No, I mean, Lynch and um, that, and, and that one are the, the, the paid actors around here. You know, I haven't been paid to do anything for a while. I'm just Mr. Extra. And brother, let me tell you something. I went, um, so, I mean, sorry, I finished the interview, we came back here and about a week after, I was sitting right here at Trail Light. And um, the spirit said to me, Jerome, and don't you feel hungry to go and get up and go and buy something? And I said, I don't feel hungry. I, I don't want to get up and go buy anything. It says, Jerome, I think you should get up and go and buy something. I said, I don't feel like I want to get up and go buy anything. I'm not hungry. And that spirit, hallelujah, persisted on me for about 15 minutes. Finally, I get mad. It's all right, you know, get up and go buy it. You know, I'm not hungry, I tell myself again. But I walked, I reached to drama school, amphitheater, and I saw Paul Buckner and um, Storm Salter, right? And my agent, because we, we did commercial, right? My agent was there, um, Chris McFarlane, and Chris said, Oh, you know, nobody, I mean, call me Jerome, he said, Sage, you come for the audition. I say. Um, I'm going to buy something for lunch. He said, oh, so you're going to buy that and come back? I said, okay. Right? So I went and I had a bag, the, the, the bun and the bag juice. I never pretty it up and I fall back. <laughs> and so Paul said to, to Chris, he's one of yours. He said, yeah, man, he's one of my, 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 
my clients, right? So I said, okay. He said, do you know um, about um, this movie that we got? I said, no. So he started telling me about something and immediately I said, oh, Green Bay Killing Vibe. And he's like, put this guy's name right down right there. He says, you didn't know about this? I said, no. I said, you started explaining something to me. It sounds like a Green Bay massacre. For those who don't know, the year I was born, there was this big political massacre in um, Green Bay with the, with the soldiers and uh, what we call, we call them political enforcers, the people who would do crimes for the politician. So the movie Better Must Come is a spin-off around that kind of a theme. And there's even a scene in the end which is likened onto the Green Bay killing. That's where it came from. But anyway, when I said that, Paul turned to, to Storm and said, take his name, right now, take his name, right now, right? Mm -hmm. And right there and then was where I knew Better Must Come. And I went to auditions for the role of Ricky, which is a lead character. I was so rusty, I'd not acted for years, right? It, it, they wanted a, a very violent, bad person, tough. And you know, I mean, I remember Christina Gonzalez and one of the girls were the, the, um, the girls I was auditioning with to play um, Ricky's girlfriend. But I know Christina on, on campus here, but you know me at Shell Life, you know, we're like wild people. And Christina was like, dancer, and you know, you know the Gonzalez, powerful name. But anyway, so the scene called for a very stern male character, but rather sing, I couldn't rough up cute Christina, not even for your audition. I couldn't rough her up, you understand me? That was so nice. But anyway, Shell and Shepard, even they, when they went for the even. Like, like, almost like a, like a slap in the face, it's like, I was even moved by it, I was like, whoa, Sheffy, I love that. And I'm like, yeah. So when, when he got the lead role, I was like, the man worked, the man deserved it, you know what I mean? But I thought I was going to get another extra role, because Lynch and I was there too. I thought we were gonna get a, I was going to get an extra role. I got a call from the director to say, um, I must come by the, 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 the movie office, the film office, which was 10 West Kings House at the time, and I went. And he says, oh, by the way, we realized that you were such a, um, a good character, your, your personage, your art. We need you in this film. And so we wrote a character for you. And so the character that really makes this movie known, and I'm not just hyping hype my own arm, you can watch the movie. Ross David, the character I played, was not a part, hallelujah, of the original script, according to what the, 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 the producer and the director told me. Paul Buckner and Sal and Salter told me, right? And so why am I saying that? Because let me tell you something. Again, struggling at the bottom of the pile, I wasn't a part of the major network. Yes, as an actor, you had to be signed up to an agency to even get a call to go and be an, uh, uh, an extra. But I wasn't the people who were the A-listers, B-listers, C-listers, D-listers, E-listers, or F-listers. I was way at the bottom of the list, right? But the most I God always knew my love for movies, always knew my love for my Jamaican theater, cinema, whatever, even though I wasn't the systematic one. And the Lord brought that truth for me. And before, Cinema media got out there in the world to take my image around the world. Better Must Come did that for me, right? Because of the grace of the Most I got. And the most poignant scene in that movie was when I, playing the Rasta man, the character gave its life for a Christian woman. Hallelujah. And that's what bind the movie together. It was the, it was a theme that make all hell broke loose, as they say, and bring the, the plot of the movie together, right? Ras David, Better Must Come. You can check it out. It's, it's an awesome, um, it's, not, it's like a historical pick, but it's not completely. It's, it has a little adaptation and a storyline, but it's really, it's, it's really good. And so in many, many seasons, beyond our even being aware of what we can do, God knows because He made us, He created us, He gave us all the talents, all the gifts. And you and I may be saying, or you may be saying, what am I going to do to survive? What am I going to do as a way of life? But the Lord has given you a talent and a gift and an ability. You're probably not even considering that that gift, that talent, that ability can take you somewhere. But if you truly would apply yourself to your gift, apply yourself to your ability, yes, you will consider the struggling designer, the struggling artist, the, the guy or the girl that lives in that tiny apartment that you're paying so much money for, or the, the apartment in a part of town that nobody wants to live, but you've got all the space you need to be creative, to be the kind of person that you need to be. But you are not just going to be at the top of the game. You need process. And God is taking care of you through the process. So you don't judge the Lord and thinking, oh, I ain't got a car yet and I've been working at it for five years, so what? You need to work a little harder and maybe not be so hard on yourself. Maybe relax a little more in what you're doing and be a, a, a more orienting being in your understanding of what you are. Yeah, that, that, when I mean orienting, I mean don't just be about where you are. See the different dimensions around you. If you're gonna be a visual artist, 
grow into a storyline of representation that's more than what you're familiar with. Read, research. You take it up a notch. Here you're born in a restricted community and you're especially religious, but then you're taking on a theme of the cosmos, earth, earth life, many di different belief systems. Go outside of the box, challenge your, your belief. Go into the, the views of what orients us in, into life, right? What orients us, what makes that person who they are and how do you relate to that? Touch that in. Because the Lord is with you, helping you to grow that seed. But you're not yet where you're producing fruit. But don't think he's not taking care of you. But on that path, that little job you got to go do a contract for $3,000, that was God. That's my old point in saying all of this. I might say things and people think I'm, I'm, I'm anti-money. That's not the case. I'm all about the faith. I'm all about God in your life giving value to what you do. Because if you worship something that is outside of yourself, that has no bearing upon you, then that's not, that's not right and that's not wise. So I'm against that. So I know God takes care of you, but don't make God be like a measurement of wealth. That's what I'm about. God ain't no material philosophy. So I'm not going to say, oh, God, take care because he gave me this and that. I mean my mental state to be able to do what I'm doing. When I did spiritual religion and culture, for years I wanted to do a documentary about this thing. I never had the equipment, but I had the thought. And the Lord kept me focused enough to not lose my vision. Now, let's be honest. Did I think it was on Sela Media that I was going to do that documentary? No, but that's not the point. The point is, God was always taking care of me along that path so I didn't lose my mind, so I could still be present enough to want to research, orient myself into understanding the different viewpoints of reality that when I actually did something, is going to be of deep worth and merit. Oh, yes. So, so Brother Singh, trust me as I'm telling you, man, the goodness of God, like I said, you know, knowing that He will take care of you is those moments where you're building. You're growing the seed and you're nurturing the, ar the archer. It's not just when you're picking the fruits. It starts that way. So, huh, you know, I think we're onto something when we understand that it's in the process, not just the end result, brother. Yes, yeah, so like, uh, how we see it is like we have to take care of what we get. You know, take care of who are around us and do the right thing. You know, worship God and love Him with all our heart, mind and soul. Yes. Love with neighbors. Yes. Love with self. Absolutely. And God will take care of we. Yes. You know? God said we must worry about tomorrow. Yeah. True that. True. Just deal with what you have to deal with today. Yeah. And then tomorrow, when tomorrow comes, you deal with tomorrow. Yes. But now, no worry for tomorrow. I have two days to deal with, you see me? True, true that. <laughs> so God said, take worry out of my mind, man, and just deal with what you have to deal with today. You know, do the right thing. So when you're done, do what you do. You know, have no regret. True. You know, I say, boy, John, I should have do this, and it would have better if I do that. Or, you know, and you, you say, why me do that, man? Why me say that to the person, and why me get upset? You know? A wee for us to come in the storm. Yes, you know? for real, for real. <laughs> and do the right thing. Give thanks for whatever you have. It could have been a little old rustic here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give thanks for what you have. Take Absolutely. care right same way. Hallelujah. You know? Treat it good. Yes. If it need a seal, get a seal. Yes. Do what you need for do. And God will see, say, oh, okay, you see, you take care of the rustic car. I give you, I step you up to something better now. Hallelujah. When time ready. So just give thanks to what you have, man. Give thanks to the little shack where you live in. You know? Because when time for come, can you take care of your shack every single day? God see the love where you have for your shack and you take care of it and you keep it clean. And you're grateful for your shack. When time come, if time will come, yes, yes. God will bless you with a nicer shock. You yes, know? Yes. If, if you want. If you want, for real. You know? Because I know everybody desire nicer things than what they have. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. Cause most people in Christ, them content. Hallelujah. With what they have. A contentment, you know? Just content. 
be satisfied. Yeah, man. And just give thanks for whatever. You know, even if I just good health and strength, you have. True. And everything else True. might rough, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you have good health and strength. Yeah, that's Enough real. people Hallelujah. in a hospital in there, ball. With all the riches too, sometimes. Pain. Yes. More time I pass some hospital, man, come like a some demon over there, ball out. Yeah. Like, whoa. Just be a pain, whoa. You know? And pregnant woman, and, you know? Yes. And them, them, them water bus, yeah. and you hear them pains them day, and I said, Jano, wow. and you then a good health and strength. Yeah. Things might rough in your pocket, you know, mm -hmm. but you have good health and strength. Yes. And you did it sitting this morning, isn't it? Yes. yes. So why not give thanks? Because could it, the man in a pain or suffer? Yes. Enough people say, Doctor, just take me out here, yeah, man. We can't deal with it. Just take me out. And me there and with a little foot injury. Yes. And me can still walk. Wow. And me now give thanks. You see me? Have to just give thanks. Yes, I. And go through in our life. A wise young man, I love that. Because, like with the pain you send the hospital, remember, a lot of healthy people, previously healthy people, end up in there, right? So there was a time we even did a video about, like, you know, people with the issues, like suffering and so, medical issues and you know how they think but we know what pain is because it's a part of the human experience but think about it i mean the beauty of childbirth is going to be that they're going to be a wonderful child but there's still going to be the struggle to to bring up that child in the world but i guess in the moment where a woman is going through the the, the travail of, of of the birthing pains they don't all speak nice things about the man who impregnate them right and they don't say nice things about even god sometimes hey and the creation sometimes because it is it is such an unbearable pain and even beyond sometimes with the epidural it's still painful but um, let's just say without it you know for many generations they didn't say nice things because the pain they were in is so unfathomable but such a beauty came from it right mm -hmm. so in another sense when you said that i wasn't just looking at it just as a suffering i'm thinking sometimes when god is taking care of us is taking us through the natural birthing pains of life yes, that life does have pains and suffering to it so to say he's not taking care of you just because you're going through like that moment like the woman of maybe eight hours and my mother said it took 24 hours i mean about one born of pain to come into this world but then after hopefully we are a joy to our parents i would know more pain to them but what i'm saying is that even through the pain there is joy and the lord is taking care of us because after the pain has subsided there will be not just relief, but there will be release and renewal and rebirth and birth and joy. So mm -hmm. it's like a lot of the dark times we're going through, nobody likes it, but it kind of helping build the character because the character needs to be built. So why is it the character needs to be built? Because within the character, there's the characteristics of the person. And if the characteristics of the person is tending towards default, right, and imbalanced as, um, uh, uh, assessment and calculations, then it's going to mean that the outcomes are going to be always unsatisfactory. Right? But if that mentality is towards responsibility and keeping yourself in a certain way of thinking, then the, the kind of state of mind we have in our outcomes, in our, in our inputs towards our outcome, will benefit us. And as I said, the Lord has taught us through that situation. Maybe we didn't do the right thing. And the storm, the suffering, the crazy stuff is a way of showing you you kind of mess up along the path because of improper alignments of your abilities and your choices and your thoughts. Maybe they weren't even all your thoughts, but something happened. But he's going to help you to clear that out, right? And during a time when it's dark, he's there still. He's taking care of you. Because think about it. You don't have a job right now. You don't have a girlfriend right now. You don't have a boyfriend right now. And you're not a hoe. So you're not out there as a woman trying to make a buck the whole right, way, right? So, but you got parents that say you're a big enough girl, woman, but they help you out. Not because they're mothering you or babying you, but they see the help you need. Because sometimes I hear parents say, they're not help their grown kids. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what kind of parents they are. Anyway, you know, I've spent how many years sending you through college, I'm done. I'm not into that. Mm -hmm. I can't. But then they're helping you, not as a child, like, oh, I'm responsible, mama, to child. They're helping you because as an adult, you need that, just that little push so that you can complete what you need to complete. At this point, you're moving from your, doctor, your, your, your master's to your doctorate. 
And that means that it's, it's a couple million to complete your doctorate, right? But that gonna take you to the next level, or a couple hundred thousand, let me bring it down, right? If your mom and your dad or your aunts or your cousins did not respect who you are and what's possible in you as a family, as a mark of God's presence in them, they wouldn't be helping you out. So don't crack under the weight and thinking, when I move from my, my, my master's and I'm, my thesis, what I'm doing for my PhD, right, or my doctorate, from my, from my PhD to my doctorate, is like it's in such an intrinsically unknown area, but an area that needs highlight, that no one is going to give me a grant so I can really fund my research. Don't quit on yourself. Don't say God has abandoned you because you are bringing forward a Christian-centered perspective and you're saying, oh, every kind of other people can go out there and get grants to get their stuff funded. Don't say that. Because mama, papa, auntie, uncle, cousins, right? What they're giving might not be a two million. So you can go and research childhood mortality around neglect based upon improper principles. But you can't go and study it in the religious context, right? Because you don't have the money to go and do the, 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 con, the control group and the cohort. But the thing is that you can do it socially amongst these little organizations you're going to. You can do it with these therapy organizations, these outreach programs. You can get the doctoral information and launch your studies. But guess what? You can fund a private program. You can fund a program with your name on it. But you can be a part of the social program and the little money that your parents put away for you, right? That they can put a little thing down so that you can eat. Don't sit in your apartment bummed out how you left your job or you've been sidelined. But the Lord has you on a mission and you gave all to God and now he's left you. Don't. And I don't know why I'm saying that. I don't know why I'm saying it that way, but I'm going to say it, hallelujah, like the Lord is telling me to say it, right? So I'm not saying it according to how he said it. Do not lose faith in God because you're saying, oh, this is about God-centered perspective and I'm in academia and I have no help. No, you have help. God has been helping you. You're not at the big point yet where your, your doctoral studies are going to be published yet. Let's be, let's be clear, you're not there yet. But you're in the process of gathering your information towards a greater good. Don't be broken so much that you cannot see that God is still there. He is taking care of you, right? That friend that called you up and offered to take you to lunch, and instead of just taking you to lunch, after lunch they gave you four or three, three gift, four gift cards, right? We know the modern word. Four gift cards that can buy something. It's not just, you know, a coupon word. I said gift cards. See, I know that. I know what gift cards are. You see what I mean? Yeah. Four gift cards. Right? And you can go and get yourself a nice dress. Buy yourself a nice shoes. You know what I'm saying? Go out for the weekend. They paid for a little vacay for you. That's just three days. Don't worry about how much money is being spent so you can go and spend time at this place. The money could be spent on another thing. The Lord is taking care of you. That three-day break... In that nice place with a nice spa, get a nice massage done, rejuvenate your soul, refocus, hallelujah, your abilities, refocus your attitude. God is taking care of you, right? And He's taken care of me enough that I can say this on the top of my voice because I'm not playing smart. God is taking care of you. Acknowledge that He's taking care of you. And as Brother Singh saying, maybe next time. You won't just be picked up and dropped off by some cool friends. Next time they pick you up and drop you off, they drop the keys into your hands. You feeling me? You feeling me? God takes care of his own. None of my seed shall sit at the sidewalk begging bread. Brother Singh. Remember in the Bible, when them say a tax time, mm -hmm. Christ would pay a tax. <laughs> and, and Christ was telling the disciples, let's go down the river there, someone. You will catch a fish. And in the fish mouth, you go find some gold kind. And you will go take that tangy Caesar. <laughs> yes, I. When Christ will find money, he'll find money. <laughs> I'll even have a fish boat. <laughs> 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 I'll 
Ya fish belly or itching yes sir. Ask the question though. Tell you no lies. Yes I hey. most I provide. God take care of them people. Always. Even one time one one of the prophets in you know, the Old Testament. Then we go up on a journey. But it's a harsh journey. Mm-hmm. And the most I say, John know him not gonna make it unless him eats something, you know. No. And an angel of God come down from heaven and give him one sweet cake from heaven. <laughs> and juice in, 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 from heaven, you know. In sweet cake in. from heaven. Yes. God take care of people. Even if you don't see no food inside. Not the same manner. The, when you are trod from Egypt and the, them day in the wilderness are trod and are trod. And every single day. And when God will send him food, he send him food. And the man will come and then pick up the man. Father provide. Even when you see no way or no way to come from. God, we send it from heaven itself. I say, hold a piece of cake from heaven. Oh, brother, God. brother, great all. Oh, you know? I'm glad you take that one. That's all about nothing beat the true and living God who is the creator of all things. Think about like a fruit, the, the most delicious fruit you can think about. That's, that's, a, that's a manifest creation of God. So think about something beyond that realm, but just use that as a reference. When we say the sweetness of salvation, I can't lift out the state of mind, that is one, but I also can't lift out the state of being. So we, we can relate it back to the taste buds to give the sense, not pleasure, you know, but to give the sensory aspect of God taking care of us. Because you see sorrow, Sorrow drown out bliss in the living being. You know, I always say blessings because bliss is a happy state of experiencing the blessings of God. So, pain and suffering, distraction, disorientation robs us of our bliss. So, one of the gifts of God are the way God has taken care of us. Just to be calm and be happy, you're more calm and you're more happier when you have a faith and an understanding of being thankful. It's when you're gracious about things, it's like you're accepting and you're satisfied, right? So, that means that you're calm. And you see that calmness? is a happy state of physical being, meaning you didn't have to go there and do something physical, achieve something to have that state. That state came simply because you are accepting the goodness of God as peace. You're accepting that peace of God, which is to have the morality and the ethical behavior, as well as if you're thinking right as well and you're act right, right? This is a gift. It's not a material yield, but what it is a yield of harmony in your vibration, just like how pain is so hurtful and you know that frequency then happiness and joy in your being that's God taking care of you getting up and you feel totally blissful hallelujah meaning your light is like not just the enlightenment in mind but a lightness of spirit an enlightening spirit or an enlightening spirit where joy comes easy because it's not based upon anything just seeing the beauty of the flowers touches your heart so much a tear can roll out of your eye, a tear of joy can come out of your eye. Being in sometimes such a vast environment and there are very few people around, sometimes no one, but you have such a auric connection to everything. One of the strongest feelings of God I've noticed in that sense is that literally you can feel, maybe as far as your eyes can see, sometimes maybe two or three or five miles away, you can feel the very sides of the rocks and the trees and you feel it like it's a part of you. And I, I'm trying to describe it, I'm going deep so I can describe it. It's literally like, as far as your eye can see, it's like it's present inside of you. It's like I'm here and if somebody was to walk upon me, people always notice about me, you can't really walk upon me, hallelujah, because I'm not feeling no matter how far you are. So it's like if you walk up in my peripheral, you're gonna see me turn and acknowledge you because you're, you're entered into a field. But maybe that radius is, um, maybe 300 or 500 yards but when the gift of God comes in it expands to as far as the eye is surveyed 5 miles, 6 miles you can feel the movement of the environment and the energy and so if you have that vibe and you get up and you want to chant a word, chant a song chant a poem I love and you go out there and share that frequency all who is receiving it is receiving a fire of a living spirit you know, in a jar because that's how you absorb it and express it. So that's one of the, the ways God has taken care of me. And I know it's strong because the enemy also tried to destroy it. The enemy tried to do the opposite. 
and make my energy dense. I come here and I'm this touch I can't even feel your vibe, right? I'm here with a nice young lady and I can't even really connect to her beyond just the surface, like just her appearance. I can't feel the aura and the vibration in her. But when I'm around a godly woman, like recently I was around a very godly woman, and her, her vibration feel was so alive, it just reminded me, I was like, wow, you know, this is one of the gifts of God. This is like God taking care of us, right? And, you know, she even, you know, sent forward a gift to yourself and to myself as well. But the aura of her presence, you didn't get, get to meet her in, in person as yet, but let me tell you something about that thing. I not only observe her in my presence, but in the presence of others. She has an etheric color, auric feel of the spirit of the most alike. We're talking about God and in instance of instance of second, revelations have come to complete statements that I've been asking about. She's been asking about answers, answers, answers. So when they say God is taking care of us, there's so much dimensions to yourself as a living being that needs watering, that needs feeding. And so the Lord is taking care of that spiritually, emotionally, make you meet in the right people, being in the right company, the right friends, the right associates. Those things are part of the gifts of God and the gifts of His goodness and he, His care over the experience. So Brother Singh, the essence of the goodness of God, God taking care of us, it's very evident if you are willing to just stay calm enough and trust God, trust His presence in your life. Yeah man, so basically we just say, let's give thanks for you have, take care of what you have, mm -hmm. do your best what you can do, and do the right thing. Always man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And pray to God and ask him to watch over you, to protect you. For ask for the, the blood of him son to cover over you. Hey. And your family and your house and your vehicle and your all of your possessions. And free up your energies in your place and your family. You know, pray over the evil, the ancestral curses over your family. Take that out of your life. You know, evil people like we. What do them thing here? Try get more information about the Most High. Yes, hey. Read your Bible more. Mm -hmm. You know, study to show yourself approved. You see me? So if a man come with a full full talk, or things that is not aligned with the Bible, mm -hmm. you know for yourself. So no man can tell you otherwise. Absolutely not. And I tell you what is in the Bible. Which is not. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. You gotta tell them, say, no, that's not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You have to go show me that, you know? Absolutely. But Absolutely. you cannot take a man word for just what it is. You have to study your Bible and know it mm -hmm. inside out for yourself. Absolutely. Yes, I. So just fill up yourself with the most I. You know? Worship him and love him. Yes. That's where it's at, man. Do the right thing. And you want to take care of your man. We all came through our nativity. And I would say most, if not all of us, have received love from one or more parents. And so that love is an example of the love of our Creator. And so that means that the essence of life is to care and be cared for, give care, and accept caring outcomes. So there is also the cautionary tale of being careful, which is taking care in your experiences so you don't offend or create hurt as a way of experience, a way of life. So caring is one of the essence of life. To know that you are loved is one of the greatest signs of peace. Peace that surpasses understanding. That's kind of like what the most I gives when you can let go of your doubts, your worries and your confusion and just allow the peace to come. Something that has nothing to do with your intellect, your strength, your sexual appeal or your business acumen. It just means you let go and just let the most I take care of you, take care of us. 
take care of the future of which you can even foresee, but like within the future of saying with the documentary that I wanted to do and seeing it that is here on Sila Media based upon my faith, based upon trusting and accepting the presence of God, taking me out of that darkness and then serving that presence, I'm getting to fulfill a lot of those dreams I had, are those ideas, those concepts, those burning feelings which originally I know was placed in me through the experience of the living God in me, right? Hallelujah, because the kingdom of heaven begins within. And the essence of it is that inside of ourselves is where we're experiencing our heavenly goodness or our earthly badness, right? And this is something we must all remember within our feelings, because feelings is not just emotion, but it's the center of value like pain and hurts. Those are feelings. Feelings aren't just ah, enjoy. So to feel is to affect form. To feel is the living essence of the form. That's very important. And so the Lord is taking care of not just the form, the nice clothes, the good jobs and a good opportunity. He's taking care of the spirit within the form, the essence, the energy, the content and the character. Those things are a gift of God as well. That if you have a sound mind, body and spirit, you think properly, you act properly, that means you're not disturbing, you're creating value from your experience. Those things are God taking care of you. Those things are the definite goodness of God, the liberty, the livication of godliness yeah, in your, your life all the time. Because you're a person that you have faith. You activate your faith. Yeah? You challenge your, your failings. You acknowledge the Most High. You give Him the praise when you need to give Him the praise, which is always if you are acknowledging His presence in your experience. That's one thing about me. I always hey, be sending off hallelujah, the praise because I know and I acknowledge. It's not me just going from the idea, oh, God is good. I'm going from the actuality of His goodness and recognize that emotionally, I could be a wreck. You know what I mean? We could be a wreck. We could be here very physically strong, very wealthy, but unable because of our unstable mind to be able to make sense of our physicality, the experience around us, or the fine foods, or the beautiful women, or the handsome man that the women are having, then we won't be able to experience that without the soundness of mind, body and spirit, which is gift of God, God taking care of us. So as a close of other thing, what are your words you want to leave them with today? Just to reconsider and be thankful about the gifts of God. Well, just remember that God loves you. You know, God loves all of us. God loves his children. You know, as a father, a real father, love a child. Yes. I saw him a look out for you and you know I tell you, say, careful mind, you know? Yes. Mind I hurt a yeah. toe, watch out for the you know the, the spiky rock. Yes. Careful. Yes. So father did it always, I take care of it. Yes. I lead we in the right direction. I said turn left man, you know? I him out with little headlight in the night. Yes. I him shine the path. You know? And I guide we to the safe journey. Yes, I. So on, on that path with the Most High taking care of us, He's a light that's keeping us through the day and the night. Yeah, because one for the day and one for the night. It's the same light in the Spirit, which is goodness, mercies and grace. Continue to like, share, subscribe. The Tree of Life Experience on Sila Media and Tree Life Television Network, Liberty Jamaica Farms, Good Food and Tours Jamaica, all the networks connected to Brother Singh, yours truly and the essence of the chill life experience. Continue to support the Patreon, Louisia.com, and um, the flow of the ministries and the experience of us sharing that goodness of God as our experience on and off screen will continue. We give thanks to the people who come to do our retreats and all of the processes. We to give thanks for uh, Melanie. I'm saying it that way because I don't want to say the other names. So Melanie, we give thanks for your presence. I give thanks for your blessings, for your gifts. Continue to support the Chair Life Experience. So until next time, this has been the Great Owl expounding on the protective, loving spirit of God taking care of us in the presence of my co-host, the prolific brother Raman Singh. Perfect, Perfect love. love.
Perfect Love.